In this lesson, we look at relations and functions. What is a relation? You learned this back in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. Uh, it's good to know the definition. A relation is any set of ordered pairs. Another way to say that, that should say ordered. Another way to say that is any graph. Uh, any set of ordered pairs can be expressed. Wow, I cannot spell right now. Uh, any set of ordered pairs can be expressed on a graph as any image. Anything you can draw or any dots you can put on a graph is going to be a relation. A function visually is something that passes a vertical line test, but the true definition of a function is a type of relation. You should memorize this definition, so please write this down. A type of relation in which each element of the domain is paired with one and only one element of the range. type of relation in which each element of the domain is paired with one and only one element of the range. Um, funny thing about elements of the domain, we have another name for elements of the domain. We tend to call those X's. And elements of the range, we tend to call Y's. So what this is saying is that each X is paired with one and only one Y. This is what you guys know uh, as a vertical line test, as um, one X can't go to multiple Y's, but multiple X's can go to the same Y that kind of thing. Uh, we finally have this domain all possible X's and the range is all possible Y's. So we got three questions for these pro six problems on this page. The first question, uh, question A, is going to be is it a function? Question mark. Question B is going to be the domain, and question C is going to be the range. So, uh, number one, is it a function? A um, couple questions you can ask yourself. The first question is, if I plugged in an X, what am I going to get more than one Y? Well, if you plugged in any X, added three, and took the square root of that number, you can only get one possible answer. If that is, if you could get an answer entirely. If I were to plug in negative four, I really can't get an answer for that. That's a real number. So, that said, uh, another check you can do is to graph it. Here's my graph of the square root of x plus 3. Um, and as you can see, that is a function. That kind of makes sense um, for a number of reasons. You should know what square root graphs look like. They're the uh, sideways um, parabolas, but they're only half of them, because this is the positive square root. So yes, it is a function. B, domain. We have two rules for domain. Rule number one, I'm going to put this over here. No divide by zero. Rule number two, no negative under the square root, or a fourth root, or a sixth root, or any of those. What it means, this is a rule number two, but better yet, we're going to say that radicands, radicands are the things underneath the radical, but we're going to say radicand is non-negative. The radicand is non-negative. Non-negative means greater than or equal to zero. Domain means that x plus 3 has to be greater than or equal to zero. When x plus 3 is greater than or equal to zero, x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Let's check this. Yes, my x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Um, so that matches. Part C, actually let's put this in set, sorry, one more thing, let's put this in interval notation. Uh, let's go from bracket negative 3 to infinity. Part C, looking for the range. A um, couple ways I can think about this. I know that from a y perspective, that this left side of the equation can never be negative because the square root means a positive square root. This symbol of a radical means a positive radical. It's actually the principal square root of the positive square root. 
So that usually tells me that uh, y has to be greater than or equal to 0. Uh, if I check the graph, I can see that the graph says, yep, uh, this is greater than or equal to 0. How do I know it's equal to 0? Well, if I plug negative 3 in for x, I'd get 0 for y. Um, it, y is greater than or equal to 0 is going from 0 to infinity on the uh, range. Number two, is it a function? That would be a heck no, because you have a plus or minus. If I plugged in uh, 6 for x, I would get plus or minus 2 for y. That doesn't make sense. Plus or minus. Um, another thing is that if I go to the graph and I tried to graph it, I'd have to graph it as two different graphs. You can see the top one is the plus uh, square root, and the bottom one here is the minus square root. You have two different graphs. It fails a vertical line test, but really it's because we can't enter that in function mode. I'd have to enter it twice. Um, so then, no, that is not a function. If you can find any example of plugging in an x and getting two possible y's, it fails a function test. Part B, domain. I know that x minus 2 has to be greater than or equal to 0, which means that x is greater than or equal to 2. And in set or interval notation, that is 2 to infinity. Part C, I know that a positive square root is going to go from 0 to infinity. I know from a negative square root it's going to go from uh, 0 to negative infinity. In other words, looking at the graph too, you can clearly see that this is, it's sort of like this one here, except that we also include now the negative numbers because we have a negative possibility. We call that all real numbers, or from negative infinity to infinity. Number three, you should know what shape that is, uh, something square, x squared, uh, that's a parabola. This is a parabola with a vertex at negative two, positive three. It's going to look like an upwards parabola um, because it's positive in front of the x. So what I know about parabolas, I know that yes, they are functions. I know that its domain is going to be all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity. I can also look at the function itself and say that that does not violate divide by zero or square root of anything. And part Z, C, if we look at this part right here, I know that the smallest that x plus 2 squared could ever be is zero. If I plug negative 2 in for x, I get zero for y. Um, or negative 2 in for x, I get 0, and then plus 3 would actually be 3 for y. What I'm saying is that this vertex is the smallest or the minimum point. We're looking for y values greater than 3, actually greater than or equal to. So we're going to go from 3 to infinity. Let's confirm graphically. So here's the graph, and if I kind of drag it up to see here, we see everything, domain of real numbers, uh, y is greater than or equal to positive 3. Let's flip back over to our h function. Uh, I have <clears throat> pretty much the same thing. This is just a negative in front of it. So it should still be a function. My domain should still be all real numbers. My range now is going to go down from 3. So we're going to go from negative infinity to positive 3. And if I actually change this to stick a negative uh, in front of the, the thing, what I get is a parabola that flips downwards. So that should match the domain and range we just said. Let's go to the next one. Uh, a, no. Plus or minus kills it. B, I want 9 minus x squared to be greater than or equal to 0. Well, that means that 9 minus x, or sorry, factor that, that means that 3 minus x times 3 plus x is greater than or equal to 0. That means that my critical values of that inequality are 3 and negative 3, which means that I'm going to test in regions, and I'm going to include those as closed circles because it's a greater than or equal to. Uh, I can test 0, and if I test 0 and plug it in, I get a positive number. Negative 3 and 3 are not repeated uh, roots, so it's going to alternate negative plus negative. Uh, that makes sense if you think about it. <clears throat> and then uh, the region I'm looking for is actually this one. So what I mean by looking for is that that contains the regions that would have domain values that are greater than or equal to 0. So my domain is from negative 3 to 3. 
range on this is a little tricky, except that it's just a plus or minus square root. Plus square roots are ranges that are positive. Negative square roots are ranges that are zero or negative, and you can certainly include zero. So this is just going to be negative infinity to infinity. Number six. Uh, number six is is also tricky. Um, is it a function? Yes. There's no plus or minus. That's really the reason. Um, B. I want the radicand to be greater than or equal to zero. This all has to be greater than or equal to zero. So we're going to do a critical value analysis. Negative one, uh, three, and negative four. Graph it. Negative four, positive, or sorry, negative one, positive three, and all of those can be closed. Um, if all of those are closed, let's just pick one number to test. Let's pick zero. Okay, zero plus one squared, that's a positive squared, which is another positive. Negative, and then a positive, which is going to give us a total of negative. Three is not repeated, so it's going to be positive here. Um, flip back over to the left. Negative one is repeated. Negative one comes from that factor, which is a square. So across square factors, we stay the same. We put a negative there. Then across the negative four, we're going to go positive because we alternate on single factors. That means that our positive regions are this region, this region, and also this point. Our domain is going to be from negative infinity to negative four, not including negative infinity, but including negative four, union, negative one, union, and then we're going to say from three to infinity. I'm going to graph this one to show you real quick what it looks like. Pause. So here's what the graph looks like. Kind of weird. We have a region here from negative infinity to negative 3, region from 3 to infinity, and we can't really see because it's just a single point, uh, the point at negative 1, uh, 0, but there is a point at negative 1, 0. So we're just going to kind of trust that it's there based on our analysis of the graph itself. Um, so that's the, uh, that's the domain. Part C, the range, it's just going to be a standard range for a positive radical from 0 to infinity, including 0, not including infinity. That matches with the graph, so that's good. And that's it.